Welcome to another video in the Timco Retail Manager course. This course focuses on real world application development. This is a series, so the way to get the most out of it is to start from the beginning and watch through in order. However, if you're just interested in the topic this video covers, that's fine too. Think of this series like a, a bunch of Lego bricks. Each is valuable on their own, but seeing them put together is even more valuable. In this video, we'll be setting up our SQL database project using SQL Server Data Tools, also known as SSDT. Now, if you're a Patreon supporter at the $5 per month level or higher, make sure you head over to get the latest source code from this video. Let's get started. So I have our project open here as we left it last. So now we need to add a new project to our solution. So let's right click on the solution and say add new project. And when I come down here to other languages, SQL Server and select SQL Server database project. Now, if you don't have this, then you probably didn't select that option when you were installing Visual Studio 2017. So what you do is go to tools, get tools and features, and it's going to give you a prompt saying, hey, do you want to elevate your permissions? And once you do, it's going to bring up this dialog here. And what you can do is actually modify your Visual Studio installer to make sure you have what you need. So for example, here is my selection. I have the .NET development tools. That's where I get C Sharp. I have the Azure development tools, the ASP.NET and web development tools. And if we scroll down here, I have data storage and processing. I believe that's where it comes in is that checkbox right there. And I also have extension development and .NET core as well. So it's up to you which ones you want to choose. But I also have chosen to include the .NET framework through 4.7.2. I would definitely encourage that. Use the latest .NET framework unless there's a reason why not to. If your job says, no, we have to have the old framework version, okay, then do that. But otherwise, upgrade to the latest framework when you're working with C Sharp or whatever project you're working with. You can also make modifications to individual components here, and that's where you could choose to have or not have certain uh, frameworks available, as well as other things down here as well. One of the options about, uh, let's see, it's under Cloud Database and Server. If you scroll down, one of the options here is SQL Server Data Tools. Make sure that's selected. Now, I didn't need to make any modifications, but if you did, hit the Modify button, and it will install the new version or the new components to your version, and it'll probably reboot or restart uh, Visual Studio. And once it's all done, then you should have the option I just showed you for SQL Server Data Tools. So again, right-click on Solution, say Add, New Project, come down to Other Languages, SQL Server, select SQL Server Database Project. We're not gonna do a change automation project. That's something different from Redgate. In this case, we're gonna choose our database name. And I'm gonna call this TRM Data. So that'd be a Timco Retail Manager Data. So that's the project name. And I'll also call a database name the same thing. Once that's done, it will give us a blank database project. Also notice that this, if you can see, it's kind of small. But in here, right here, it says it's got a little plus icon, meaning it's a new thing that we're adding to our uh, source control. Also, the red check mark means this has changed. In this case, our solution file has changed because we've added a second project to our solution. You can also see that over here. If we go to changes. You can see those two changes right here. All right, so let's set this up for a database project. Now I have some folders that I like to see uh, always included. So I'm gonna add those first. So right click on the project and say add. The first folder I'll add is for the database itself. So DBO for database owner. That's the schema name that we'll be using for 
our entire database. Now, as you advance in SQL Server, you'll probably want to use different schemas for different sections of your data. But because this is a small application and it's not really something we have to worry about as far as segmentation of our database. So we're going to leave it at one schema for our application. So the DBO, the standard default schema is what we'll be using for our schema. All right. And if you're not familiar with schema, the closest way I can uh, correlate it for the C sharp world is the namespace. It's a little more than that because schema can have its own permission set and some other things, but in general, it's kind of like a namespace. So now I'm going to add a folder in here under DBO for tables. I'm going to add another folder under DBO for views and another for stored procedures. And from what I've seen, the standards seem to be to include that space there in stored procedures. Normally, I don't include spaces in things. But in this case, it seems to be the standard. So I'll leave it at that. But again, normally, I wouldn't put a space there. All right, I'm going to add another folder at the root this time. And this will be for publish locations. That's basically where we're going to have our published scripts published to. So that's our database. And now if we right click on the actual project itself and say publish, and there's not really much to publish here, but we've got some enough to create a profile. So let's go to edit, go to our browse, select local, and just select our local MS SQL local DB. Let's hit OK. That creates a connection string for us. And we need to get a database name. So let's call it TRM data, which matches our project name. And I'm going to say save profile as. In this published locations, I'll just save the default name, which is TRM data.publish.xml. And now I'm also going to hit publish, which there's not much to do here because there's no SQL stuff in here yet. It's basically an empty structure. But what it should do is create my actual database itself. So if we open this up and we refresh the databases, we now see TRM data. If we open that up, there's nothing in the tables, same with views and under there, store procedures, nothing. So they're all three are empty because there's nothing yet in our tables, views, or store procedures. So that's really all there is of setting up our database project. Pretty simple stuff. And I don't want to go any further because we haven't yet planned out what data we need or how we're going to work with it. So I think at this point, I'm going to actually say, that's it. We've set up the project. We've got it to publish and we're ready to go. Now, once we start working on what the plan is for our actual application, we are still in the setup phase, just setting up our basic structure we know we need before we plan the next step. And so once we know the next step and know what data we need, then we'll put our tables, views, and store procedures in here to kind of flesh this out. And we're getting close to that. Our next step is going to actually be to set up our WPF project for the front end work. So we'll set that up the WPF project and uh, configure MVVM for it as well. And then once we're done that, we're almost ready to start planning out what this application is going to do and how it's going to do it. Okay, so stick around for that. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.